Are you ready to conquer cinematic motion graphics with light and shadow? If so, we'll be using After Effects to easily create real 3D scenes with reactive lighting, which will add some drama and depth to your life. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, this is all about working with real 3D objects in which you can import .glbs, which allow for textured 3D models right here in After Effects. Now, the great thing about 3D objects is that there's a bunch of free assets that you can get with a quick search. Though, when you place a 3D model, into After Effects, you'll usually need to scale and sometimes rotate this into position. Now, lighting is everything. It's the difference between bottom sirloin and fillet minging. I mean, flaming young. <laughs> the difference between, you know, good and great. So let's start by creating a point light and there should be an immediate difference right off the bat. Just make sure that your 3D model has all three of these options set to on. And to make our lighting cinematic, there's a couple things that we'll do. For starters, moving the light around is a really great technique and that's pretty easy, but I wanna move this in a 360 degree movement. So we'll go ahead and create a null object and make it 3D and then we'll parent our point light to it. And from here, we can go to the Y rotation Alt click the stopwatch and we can use like time asterisk 200 to have our light orbit around our statue. This is a nice hack and it looks great, but it's truly up to you to make sense of your lighting. You know, we're not here just to add random explosions for the heck of it. <laughs> Another way to actually make our lighting cinematic is with practical lighting. This is where you can actually see the light source. So let's go ahead and create a white circle with the ellipse tool and make it 3D. And when you're ready, you can copy the Z position of the point light and paste it to the Z position of that shape layer and then just move the shape to be right on top of your light. And lastly, go ahead and parent your shape layer to the null object. And then under the material options, be sure to turn off except lights. And now as we scrub through here, you may notice that the circle tends to turn away from our view. Uh, so to fix this, we can select the shape, go to layer, transform, auto orient, and select orient towards camera. Awesome, now this looks great, but we still have some amazing techniques to come. But first, if you want to quickly deck out your motion graphics with some sick titles, be sure to get my free template pack here for After Effects and Premiere Pro. We also have over 40,000 other assets like seamless transition packs and animation presets allowing you to never animate again. So be sure to get our free pack and everything that you need to save countless hours in the description below. All right, let's expand and move on to the next big topic, which is lighting color contrast. For instance, we'll go ahead and create another practical light source by designing an orange or reddish stroke circle. And of course, make it 3D. And then we're gonna wanna push this back in Z position space. So this is behind our model. And of course, be sure to turn off except lights. All right, when this is ready, we'll go ahead and create another point light and choose you know, that primary color. And to show this best in two views, we'll push the light back behind your 3D model. And you'll notice that the light mostly affects the back of the statue, which is good. But the higher you push the intensity, the more the light will wrap around the front. But I'll keep this at 100% as we'll take advantage of this light in a few moments. And overall, if your scene is just, you know, too dark for your taste, you can create an environment light and adjust the intensity as needed. Now for a vital part of our tutorial, you can trick out your scene with cinematic depth by creating an adjustment layer. Now the first effect should be the noise effect, which you can set to say 6% and uncheck color noise. The next effect, which is an absolute must, is obviously the glow effect. You'll notice in the latest version of After Effects that the glow effect settings have been you know, converted to a percentage, which is just dandy, but set the radius to 45% and then duplicate the effect twice. And lastly, try posterize and set it the level to around 16. You know, but this looks great on my end. You may need to vary these settings or choose what you want to use and what you don't want to use. But after the next few steps, the VFX here will pop. You know, for now, let's get some camera movement going. We can create a camera and the 50 millimeter preset is just 10 out of 10. Also, create a 3D null object and then parent your camera to it. Now, here's all the tricks for animating your camera. For instance, you can add keyframes for position and point of interest, and then use a dolly towards cursor tool to zoom in or out of your scene. Additionally, if you want to rotate the camera around your model, you can use the Null's rotation to do so. And you can also use the camera tools to reposition the camera to just get that correct angle. And to make some unique camera movement, select your final keyframes, hit F9 to make them easy ease, and then go to the graph editor and pull this handle all the way over like this to vary your movement, which is just super nice. But it's truly up to you how you want to move this camera and you can pretty much do anything you want. All right, 
We're looking good. Just two more things and then we can hit the casino. <laughs> If you want particles, create a white solid and apply the CC ball action effect. Essentially, you want to lower the ball size and increase the scatter. And since this is a 3D effect, our camera will essentially fly right through the particles, which makes our job so easy. Though, if you want some extra movement, you can add, say, the time expression to the scatter motion to animate the particles. Now, lastly, we've made it to the end, but we still need that cinematic depth of field or that out of focus look. So, pre compose everything, except for that adjustment layer with all the effects, then apply the 3D channel extract effect. And then you're gonna wanna dial in the black and white point until what you want to be in focus is black and what you want to be out of focus is white and you can also invert the map. Lastly, you're gonna wanna apply the depth of field effect and increase the maximum radius by a touch. Then when this is all done, duplicate the comp, delete the effects on the top layer and then apply the camera lens blur effect. And essentially we just wanna set the blur map to the bottom comp and choose effects and mask, boom. Now you have some depth of field and the ability to change the shape of the bokeh if you don't want that hexagon look. And hopefully you'll add in some cool looking titles, but subscribe to be the best and always be creative.